Welcome to another episode of Tinkering with Tiny Humans. I have my favorite little girl tiny human, Lainey, over here. And today we are going to show you how to fix some common broken plastic things around the house. And we're gonna be fixing most of them with metal, which I know is counterintuitive, but we're gonna do it anyway. So issue number one is this brush. Somehow it became broken when someone was upset about brushing her hair. I won't say who it is, but these two pieces are now broken. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to get those to stay together. And then this, is a support piece from our reclining chair. And when children climb across the recliner when the arm is extended, it tends to break this thing in half. Now, I temporarily glued this back together with some CA glue, some cyanoacrylate, um, but that is just to hold everything in alignment so we can do the next steps of our repair. It's not strong enough to make a permanent repair. And then lastly, we have a little uh, pill cutter. So we're gonna try to fix that as well. So for all these projects, um, the basis of our repair is going to be take the plastic, add some reinforcement with some metal, and then use some different adhesives that I found uh, tend to work pretty good in the past. Which one do you want to do first, Lenny? You want to do this, this, or this? Let's not. Let's fix mom's brush. Let us fix this and this at the same time then, because we're going to use the same kind of glue for that, okay? Oh. So if at all possible, uh, you'd like to glue together your pieces with CA glue or some other adhesive, if only to hold them into alignment while you put the other stuff together. So we're just gonna use this little piece of scrap aluminum as a, a little protector for the table. Can we put that underneath that to make it more stable? We will, this is not gonna get used up in this stuff. It's just gonna protect the table. Oh. Yeah. So we're gonna use some CA glue, so you should put on some safety glasses. So we got CA glue that's thin, we got CA glue that's uh, kind of thick, we got some activator here, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold this piece where it needs to be, and we're gonna have Lainey put a little drop of this thinner than water CA glue on here, and see if we can get this to stay in place. Now, it would have been smart for me to get some tape. Not yet. Okay, so this is wiggled in the right spot. Just put a little tiny drop in there. You have to squeeze ever so slightly, but very gently. Good. All right, so well, look. No, that's perfect. I don't know if you could see, you probably can't see on the camera, but through capillary action, when she put the little drop next to the crack, it wicked into the crack in both directions. So it like soaked it up, and that is a pretty good repair. Yeah. So she did a good job there. And then just so that it doesn't fuse to our hands while we're touching it, we'll put a little accelerator on it and that'll make it um, harden or cure very quickly in like two or three seconds. One, two, two three. three. Okay, good. Bye. All right, so we're gonna put that off to the side. The next thing we're gonna do is figure out how we're gonna fix this. So what I think we should do. Don't super glue on it. Super glue is good for many things, but this has a lot of force on it. So when you're using brushing metal? Your hair. We're gonna use metal, yeah. So we're gonna take this, and I think what we'll do is we're going to drill a hole in here, and we're going to drill a hole in here, and then we're going to put some two-part plastic cement, bonding plastic cement. So we're gonna bore that out, we're gonna bore that out, we're gonna stick our rod in there, we're gonna stick some epoxy in there, and uh, hopefully fill in this gap over here as well, okay? So step number one is going to be, I need you to find the drill bit that is one or two sizes How bigger than this. Mode? Well, figure it out. How would you figure it out? Now. So check this out. This drill bit set has the same size hole on the top as it does on the side. Oh, so you so could do this and say, wow, that's way too big. Yeah. Oh, that's way too big. So figure out which one you think we should that's use. It's So that is, that too that's big. too tight, yep. And that one's probably perfect. However, I want a little bit of room in case we don't drill our holes completely parallel that we can manipulate it. So I would go so into this one. This yep, one. so pop that one out. Beep, 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 beep. There you go. Now on a drill bit, these flutes right here, this is what takes the material out of the hole. So when you're drilling in wood, this is what gets the chips out but this can be sharp. So when you pull out a drill bit, make sure that you grab it good and tight and don't let your fingers slide on those grooves or else you can cut yourself, okay? The real cutting action on the wood or the steel or whatever happens up here, but when you pull this out of the holder, sometimes this can cut you. So make sure you hold it good and strong, okay? All right, so now that we have this size right here, in fact, I'm gonna go one more size bigger just because, yeah, I know. 
All right. Would you be so kind as to put this bit into the uh, drill for me? Yeah. Do you remember what this part's called? Drill bit holder? It's not a drill bit holder. It's called a chuck. Mm, it is a drill bit holder. Yeah. That is a three jaw chuck. So it has these three little jaws that grab the bit. And when you rotate that. Charging chuck from Mario? Um, no, not truck, chuck. I said charging chuck from Mario. Well, yes, <laughs> I don't know. Now, this is very good, except you never want to grab the bit uh, with the jaws where the flutes happen because this is where the bit is weak. So we want to make sure two things. If this bit has flat spots on it, see how there's three flat spots? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. We want to make sure that those flat spots are on the same flat spots of the chuck jaws and that prevents it from spinning. So what you'll do is you'll just rest it in there and then turn this. Spin? Well, we don't want the bit to spin in here. Because when we're drilling, if this encourages or if this encounters resistance, then this is just going to lock up and then the chuck's going to spin around it. So what we want to do is make sure that we're on the flat spots so that when we tighten this down, even though this is loose, see how this is loose? I still can't spin the bit. Try to spin the bit. See, it's locked in there by those flat spots. Make sense? Do you see yeah. That? Okay. All right. And then with this drill, if you just make it click a couple times, that means that it's good and secure. All right. So now that we have that, I'm going to start the hole. Sadly, I don't want to do much of the drilling. Well, you have to do some of the drilling because you broke it. It's just part of the deal. So you oh. We'll edit that out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So Dad. it's a little tricky to get the bit started. Sometimes when you're drilling in metal, you can use a center punch. But I found that sometimes these plastics are real brittle and that it'll cause it to shatter. So I'm just going to have to do my best to start the bit. If it doesn't work, what I can do is I can take a soldering iron and melt a little hole in the middle to get started. All right, so safety glasses are on. And I will get this started. So when you start drilling on an angled surface like this, you want to put the bit as perpendicular to the slopey part as you can. And once you've started the hole, then you're going to manipulate the drill so that it's parallel, right? Another thing is you actually want to use a dull drill bit when you drill through plastic, because if the drill bit is too sharp, then it can drag itself, it can auger in. So like the real sharp pieces will like make it pull in really fast and can crack. So if you can use a dull drill bit, or if you're drilling through brass, you want a dull drill bit for brass too. I don't have a vise that I can bring over here for the camera. So I'm going to drill this myself because I don't feel safe with you drilling this. But if you have access to a vise, you would put this into a vise and that would make it a lot safer to drill. The concern I have is that if this drill bit walks to the edge, it could come out the side and into your hand. So I'll do yeah. the drilling and then you can help me with the other steps. Okay. Yeah. That looks okay. Yeah, pretty good. All right. Now here's the thing. We have to figure out how long to make this. Do you have any thoughts on how we could figure out how long to make this piece? If you were going to do it, what would you do? I just cut it. Well, how long? to cut it. So you think it should be cut where? Right there. Right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a Sharpie and we're going to see if your guesstimate is correct. One way to do it would be if you put that piece in there and you make a little mark where it's at the bottom. And then you could also do this and put a mark where this one is. And then we'll add those two links together. So if this is about one inch even, then we'll add one inch even to this. Can you put a mark exactly where the one inch mark is? Kind of by my, whoops, just got bumped. Yep, right there. Mark it on the uh, threaded piece. Okay, Boom. good. All right, so we've got our bolt cutters and we're going to line it up right about. All right, go ahead, cut it. I'm scared. You're gonna cut metal with compound action. I am really scared that this Why? is gonna you go safety flying. Glasses on. It probably will not. It's a, it's a pretty big piece. It's not gonna fly far. It's also not hardened, so it's probably just going to squish and fall on the table. Hardened stuff tends to snap like a candy cane. This stuff is not tempered. Oh, what was that? That was you cutting metal. No, it was. Totes. 
All right, let's see if it Again. works. Again, it was a tool cutting metal. Wait, if this is too big, what are we gonna do? Mm, then I'd have to get another piece of threaded material. No, then we're gonna have to get oh, another brush. That looks good. Brush. That looks really good. The next thing that's important is whenever we apply a uh, glue or adhesive, we, gotta we wanna roughen it. a little it. gap. We're not doing cavities though. No, we already did that. We filled in the gap with the CA glue. We gotta roughen it up. So you can either use some sandpaper or a little scratchy tool like this. You can make some scratch marks on it. But since we have a Dremel, we're gonna use a Dremel tool. So we're gonna use this little burr, this spherical burr, and that's gonna let us make some scratch marks on here, some scratch marks on here, and some scratch marks on here. So, start this up. Is it dangerous? No, as long as you keep your finger away from there, you're fine. So we'll go like this. I'm gonna keep it moving. Use that front hand to control it so it doesn't get away from you. Very good. That is excellent. Yeah. All right, we'll wipe this off with some acetone. Acetone is a solvent. It's the active ingredient in nail polish remover. And it smells kind of strong. So whenever there's something that you don't know what it is, you never stick your nose up to it. You take a waft of it. So can you smell that? Sounds like nail polish remover, right? Yeah. All right. But I know what it is. So this is a pretty powerful organic solvent. Sometime it'll take the shine off of plastic or sometime it'll melt it. So like here, we'll do a little experiment. See how it's shiny back there? See how it made it dull? It actually melted the plastic. It chemically melted it. See those little swirlies in it? Whoa, yeah. you melted mom's brush. Just a little bit for demonstration purposes. All right, so we got that. You melted mom's We won't tell her. So now we've got our parts cleaned off. The final step is gonna to be to mix up some adhesive. So I don't know how much to use. I always end up making too much and wasting some. What you do? Yeah. I've never seen you make adhesives. All right, so this cap, it keeps the two chemicals separated because it won't start to harden until we mix them together. And then we'll have about 15 minutes. So this, to it me. different. Well, they're two different colors so that we know when that they're mixed. All right, when you mix this together, you don't have a huge amount of time because the longer that you mix it, the faster that it's gonna start to cure. And also, it cures by heat. All right, so then we're going to, can you take this? Actually, you know what your job is gonna be? Your job is gonna be to roll the end of that into the adhesive. You all like the edge, so like pretty good there. As we put this in, we want to rotate it. Because right now there's a pocket of air in there. So we want this to act like a screw to get the air and the extra adhesive out of there. So now, well, no, because it's like a cylinder. So it's like a hydraulic cylinder. Since you put glue around the outside, it's trapping the air and the air doesn't want to be able to escape. All right, so then we go like this. We're going to put some goo into this hole. All right. So we're gonna go like this. All right, so this looks good. Well, sometimes you can repair broken plastic with other pieces of plastic and you can melt it into place. So what I'm gonna do is this. So I'm gonna fill this up like this and then I'm gonna put a piece of tape over here so it'll act like a dam like it'll hold back the water of a dam. And then when I tilt this upright, the piece of tape is gonna act as a casting or a, like the side of a mold so that this doesn't droop out while it's dry. So this is going to make a third side to this. Like this. And then I'm gonna set this up at an angle in my workshop so that the adhesive flows into this corner and makes it as strong as possible. All right, home stretch. We ready to fix that part now, please? Okay. All right, so for, why is there a hedgehog with a blindfold? Is that the hedgehog safety glasses? Yeah, he needs them. Yes, safety third. Okay, very nice. Safety third? Yes, well, it's supposed to be safety first, but. All right, so hedgie's over there. So this was temporarily put together with uh, CA glue. What I did is I put some saran wrap down on the table. 
I clamped it down against the edge so that it was nice and straight. And then I used the thinner than water stuff and it came through the gaps. And that's what made that wrinkly appearance. If you don't want that, if this is gonna be seen, mine will not be seen, um, just put some tape on the backside and that way the glue won't leak out. Uh, and that holds it together for us nicely enough until we can put this plate in position there and glue it in spot with glue. So I need you to do the same thing. So do you see this mark here? It's just called the glue video. Do you see this mark? There. Here. Now I do. Okay. So grind everything in between those spots, please. Okay. Two hands. No, all just in here. In there? Yeah, like the side. So I'm gonna do these sides because the sides are what is gonna grip. And if you really, really, really wanna make a grab good, you can actually drill sideways through some of these little ribs so that when the glue goes in, it like grabs it on both sides. So I'll show you real quick. Only for one. Yeah, sure, just for one. Okay. See? You can stop. What? Clean our metal with our solvent. What's this called again? Acetone. Acetone, yeah. No, silicone's different. So we hit this with the random orbital sander. So we scuff this up. No, we just want a good bond between this and the glue. All right. We are going to use. We're gonna use this. Oh. This is PL polyurethane construction adhesive. My that's favorite. Different. Anyone who uses other construction adhesives. Well, no, that's not new. No, I use this all the time. It's my favorite. You know that. So yeah, this is the best it's construction weird. adhesive it's because it's low VOC. Do you know what VOC means? Volatile organic compounds. So that means it's not stinky. It has a long open time. Do you know what an open time means? Uh, it won't glue into your fingers. Kind of. It's how long you have to work with it. So normal construction adhesive that's solvent based, when you put it down, the solvent evaporates and then it gets a skin on it. And if you don't bond your two pieces together after that, it doesn't really stick. So sometime when people build a house and they have squeaky floors, even though subfloor adhesive was used, it's because the crew was not paying attention and they put the glue down too far ahead of where they were working. And that caused um, it to get a skin on it that never eventually bonded. That's this won't happen. Oh, All right, so now that we have a thin layer across there, oh, we're going oh. to, where's our little witness mark there? And there. What I'd like to do is I'd like to get this to seat in the middle so that when I walk this out to the left and right, it squishes the stuff out of the edges instead of, yeah, there we go, that's good. So that tells me that this is pretty contiguous. Okay, good. How is this just the right size? Because I measured and oh, cut properly. To to measure it. No, I just found one that was a good fit. Okay, I need your help. Can you gently squeeze this clamp in the middle? Sure. Yeah. My bad. No, that's the release. This is the, this is the tightening side. Tighten, tighten, tighten. Okay. I thought I was. Yeah, go for it. Okay, that's good. Get that a squeeze. Squeezy, squeezy, squeezy. Okay. No, it's not squeezy enough. It's squeezy 
Jordan. It's too popping. Wait, it is. What? Why is it all exploding? Uh, it's just kind of oozing out because we applied pressure to it. All right, we're gonna clean up this mess and then we'll come back when everything is cured and uh, we will show you how the repair of this and the hairbrush and the uh, pill splitter turned out. Welcome back. Well, it's been a couple of days, so our adhesive had a chance to cure. For the epoxy that we mixed up, the plastic cement, that probably only needed an hour to be able to handle it uh, and maybe 24 hours for maximum cure. However, I made a mistake on this part. Um, when I put this piece down, I forgot the polyurethane needs moisture to cure. And when you put it between two impermeable substances, we got the plastic here, we got the metal here, um, there's no way for the moisture to get into it and cure. So I eventually uh, clamped this up, waited three days, and then I drilled some little tiny test holes in the back, 16th of an inch, uh, to make sure that the stuff inside was cured. Um, on day number two, it was still kind of gooey inside. After day four, it seemed pretty good. So that's definitely one thing that I would do differently. Uh, another thing is you can do a little test with your CA glue. I put a little drop of glue right here and uh, you can test it and just see how well it sticks. And if it is HDPE or LDPE, it'll just flick right off. This is really stuck on there good. It's almost like I have to carve it off. So this glue that we put down here, the CA glue is actually helping pretty good. Uh, but even though you have this all glued up and you have your metal in place, one thing to consider is which side to put your metal on. And you always wanna put the metal on the side that's gonna put your crack into compression and not tension. So since we have the metal on the back side here, uh, when I press down on this or when a child who is jumping across the couches jumps could across this, Jacob. it could be Jacob or this other child. Oh. It'll bend this way and the crack on the top will be crushed together. If we put the metal on the top and we press down on it, the crack on the bottom will open up. So yeah. try to pick the side uh, to support your metal that will put the crack in compression. And I think that's pretty much all I learned about this piece. Check out how well this turned out. Well, it is a little stiff because I think the plastic is not as flexible anymore, but this corner is now extra strong. Uh, it's really hard and it's completely flat with the perimeter piece, so it closes nicely. And, uh, and the brush, yeah, good and sturdy. I think this turned out really, really well. So Lainey, what do you think was your favorite part of this project? Using the Dremel tool to roughen the part. Oh yeah, using the Dremel tool to roughen up the surfaces before we put our glue on, that's a good one. Uh, what was your least favorite part? Yeah, I'd be using the Dremel. Oh, when I was drilling this out? Yeah, it definitely would have been safer to put it into a vise, and I would do that if we had a vise that we could put in front of the camera. I might find a way to do that. Um, that's a really good suggestion. That made you nervous? Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, what would you do differently next time? Tell the child who threw the brush not to throw it. You would tell the child, who will not be named, that when they, he or she, is angry, uh, that he or she, or it or they, should not throw the brush. That's a great suggestion. It. It. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate do this fix for you. This definitely saved for mo some money. This was like, you know, 20 cents worth of glue. This, I would have to remake this out of wood if I didn't fix this. Maybe the brush for the time and effort it took uh, to fix. It might've been better just to throw it out and start from scratch, but I don't like wasting things. And if I can put something back together again and get another half a dozen years out of it, I'm gonna do that. This chipped in yes. like one of the, and then like that also broke. Okay, so we have some permanent scarring here. We've got some chippage going on here and we've got a missing piece here. But other than that, completely serviceable. Okay. Well, thank you again. Uh, if you enjoyed this, if you'd like us to try anything else for you, please like and subscribe. If you could put down in the comments anything that you've tried to fix that you thought was really tricky to fix, um, would like to try to recreate it and see if we have a good solution for you. So until next time, thank you so much and have a great day.